All right, thanks for joining me. My name is Colin McCarthy, and I'm going to show you a demonstration today of the Vault Kubernetes Sidecar Injector. Now, hopefully you're familiar with Kubernetes and the sidecar pattern. So you can already kind of have a good understanding of what that is. But what I'm going to talk about now is how to create the vault sidecar injector, which will take a KV secret from vault and inject it into our deployment container. So let's take a look. The first thing that we're going to do here, uh, let me just get a shell onto the vault container. All right. So we are going to enable the KVV2 seek engine. Now you'll notice that was enabled at the path internal. We are now going to create a key value pair secret inside of there, right? So username equals password equals. So let's do that now. All right. And just so you can maybe track it visually, I'm going to go ahead and go into the GUI of Vault. And you can see here's our path that we just created. And then here are our two key value pairs. We can kind of look at those. All right. So next, we are going to enable the Kubernetes auth method. So again, uh, we are talking about secrets engines, auth methods. These are the kind of two pillars to think about with Vault. So we just did the KV secrets engine. Now we're doing the Kubernetes auth method. So let's enable that. Now we're going to create a configuration with the Kubernetes auth method. Uh, now this is really just so that Vault uh, understands the IP address of this kind cluster. So I'm going to set that real quick. Basically just sent it, set, setting this environmental variable. That way it, it can just go grab the IP. Next, we are going to create a policy. Now, again, I think we talked earlier about policies and what they are. Now, this policy, if you notice, it's going to have a path. And then it's going to have a capability. Now, if you take a look at this path, this is the path for our KV secret. So internal database config, right? That's where we created these two key value pairs. So now we are creating a policy on these capability of read. Now, since we've created our policy, the next thing we're going to do is create a role. So if you kind of read through this, we are writing a role for the Kubernetes off method. And we are using uh, internal app. We're, what is the, What this is going to do is bound the service account in Kubernetes, which we're going to create. It is going to bound the namespace within Kubernetes. It is going to bound the policy that we just created. And then we're also adding a TTL for the auth method. So let's go ahead and create this role. Now, 
Now that's everything that we need to do on the vault side. So I'm going to exit out of the vault CLI here. And now we're going to move to Kubernetes. So if we take a look here, we have our vault pod, right? Which we were just, you know, accessing via the terminal there and we've configured. So now let's take a look at what service accounts currently exist. Okay, and let's create our internal app service account. So you notice when we created this role, we bound this role to the internal app service account. And so we need to go ahead and create that service account. So I'm going to do that now. We'll do uh, get service accounts again, just to verify that that got, got, got created. And there it is, right? So it now exists. Now what we're going to do is actually apply our deployment manifest. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at the deployment manifest. So you'll notice a typical Kubernetes deployment manifest here, but the one thing that we've sort of added that might be out of the norm are these annotations right here. So these annotations are going to turn on the agent injector sidecar, right? So we're saying that equals true. We are going to set the role as the internal app role that we just created. And we are going to set the path where the key value pair secret exists that we want to inject, right? So it's going to inject this secret the internal data database config. So if we come in here and you look at our path, internal database config. So let's go ahead and apply this deployment file. All right, so we'll just watch this pod. Should only take a little bit here. Okay. So now you notice our org chart deployment is running. The second thing you should notice here is the number of containers that are in our org chart pod. There's two. We have our org chart app, and then we have the vault sidecar pattern there, right? So the sidecar is a second container that gets spun up with the org chart app. So if we take a look inside this pod, we can take a look at the containers. So the first container is org chart. The second container is vault agent. So here's the image for your first Here's the image for your second. So just so everyone understands, right, the, the sidecar pattern here, it, it, it it's basically just the second container that gets spun up. Just like a motorcycle has a sidecar riding next to it, right? So our app has the vault agent riding next to it. And that vault agent is going to inject 
a secret from Vault into the file path of our org chart container. So our deployment is now up and functioning, right? If we were to get a shell on the org chart container, Oh, let's take a look at a what we'll do. All right. So now we have a shell on the org chart container. We're going to change directory to vault secrets. And here you can see we have a text file named database config. So if we cat that, what you'll see here is our key value pairs. So our password is data DB secret password. The username is DB read only username. So if we were to go into vault now and create a new version of this KV, let's say just for fun. We're going to change the password to SpongeBob, the username to Krusty Krab. We're going to save that. So now what's going to happen is about every five minutes or so, the sidecar is going to check with Vault and verify that we still have the correct version of those key value pairs. Uh, if we don't, then it will kind of reconcile that for us, right? It will replace the contents of this database config.txt file with the correct key value pairs. Again, this checks about every five minutes. So let's take a look here. Oh, it looks like it actually they worked pretty quick for us. So now you can see our key value pair for password is, is SpongeBob. Our key value pair for username is Krusty Krab. So hopefully that's a good demonstration for you around how the Vault sidecar injector works. Just to summarize, what we did here. We enabled the KVV2 secrets engine. We put some key value pairs at the path. We enabled the Kubernetes auth method. We configured it with the correct IP address for the Kubernetes cluster. We wrote a policy named internal app with a path for our KV secrets. We put a capability of read on there. We then created a role that bound the Kubernetes service account internal app, the default namespace where we've deployed this application. We connected the internal app policy and we put a TTL on there. So this was our role, right? This was our policy. We then on the Kubernetes side, we created that service account. We deployed our application. And again, our application contained some special annotations that turned on the vault sidecar injector. 
it we told it the role that we're using and then we told it the path where the key value pair secrets are and we then demonstrated that the secrets were there and then we demonstrated rotating them all right thank you very much